Let's use this USB doctor to explain electric vehicle charging. I've been driving an electric vehicle for over 9 years, back when chargers were few and far between and it was much more difficult to get installed in multi-unit buildings. Finding a fast charger was like finding a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. While many things have improved, in this video I'm going to share my experiences and knowledge, both personal and professional, as I work for an electric automaker, to help you understand charging so you can get the most out of your EV. Back when I got my EV, I was fortunate enough to have a friendly board that allowed me to use a nearby level 1 outlet with a plug-in meter, sending my monthly usage stats and writing them a check. I even got a quote to get a dedicated level 2 line run to my spot, but ended up waiting for them to install shared level 2 chargers. The too long didn't read or too long didn't watch of this video. Number 1. I highly discourage purchasing an electric vehicle if you do not have a home charger or at least consistent, convenient, daily access to a level 2 charger, such as at work. While a level 1 may suffice for low mileage drivers, it is insufficient once the weather turns cold as battery heating will consume more than the L1 can provide if your vehicle is exposed to cold ambient temperatures. Number 2. When installing a level 2 charger, use an electrician that specializes in electric vehicle chargers. I've seen many improper installs from licensed electricians. While a licensed electrician may know how to properly run the wiring required for a charger, they may still not set it up properly. Using a service like Qmerit ensures a proper install. Number three, at a DC fast charger, if your vehicle is charging slowly, 95% of the time, it's due to either on the charger side, the charger is maxed out due to the current capacity of the charger, or on the vehicle side, your battery is too full or too cold. More on both of these later. But first, let's start with some fundamentals of electricity. This short video from California Utility Pacific Gas and Electric is a quick explainer. Think of electricity like water. Voltage is the pressure of water flow, and amperage is the quantity or amount of water flow. Multiplying volts times amps equals power at that moment, measured in watts. Since power is the result of these two products, you can achieve the same power in multiple ways. Let's say a device needs 1000 watts of power. Using a lower voltage such as 100 volts, it would need 10 amps of current to transfer 1000 watts of power. Using a higher voltage such as 200 volts, it would only need 5 amps of current to transfer 1000 watts of power. Using another analogy, if you want to fill up a bucket of water, you could use a high powered pressure washer that sprays a very high pressure stream of water but at a much lower quantity or volume or you could use a giant hose that has lower pressure but transfers a much larger volume of water. Higher voltage requires more expensive, higher powered electronics to handle that higher voltage or pressure, and higher current requires larger, thicker wires to carry that larger quantity of electricity due to the heat generated. That's why when you look inside a breaker panel, all the breakers are measured in amps, and the higher the amperage, the thicker the wire required. I'm going to use another charging system that everyone's familiar with, USB-C, to explain some of these charging elements and variables and relate them back to electric vehicle charging. Here's a USB-C laptop charger. It's rated for 65 watts and supports multiple voltages and amperages, but notice that the full 65 watts is only available for devices that can receive 20 volts. At the standard USB voltage of 5 volts, it will provide up to 10 watts of power at 2 amps. If I plug in a device such as these Bluetooth earbuds, does it mean that it'll charge at 10 watts? No. The device will only draw what it's capable of handling, in this case 1 watt, a fraction of what the charger can provide, but even if it could max out the 5 volt supply, it would still be limited to 10 watts instead of the charger's maximum 65 watts, which is only available at a voltage that the device does not support. This same process of voltage and current matching happens between the vehicle and DC fast charger. When you're charging an electric vehicle, the vehicle constantly communicates with the charger and then draws the appropriate amount of power up to the maximum available from the charger. Similarly, DC fast chargers supply a wide range of voltages and have to match what the vehicle is capable of receiving. Vehicles such as those from VinFast as well as my BMW i3 use a 400 volt architecture while some EVs have 800 plus volt architectures. Next up, let's look at the other critical element of charging, how the electricity gets from the charger to the device. And here's where we'll encounter what is most often the limiting factor, the cable and plug. Looking at USB cables, you'll notice that some are rated for 30 watts, 60 watts, 100 watts, all the way up to 240 watts. This same limitation exists for electric vehicle chargers and their cables and handles. Next up, let's look at the state of charge or how empty or full a battery is. When a battery is emptier, it's like an empty bucket or an auditorium. You can open up the tap fully and fill it up with the max rate the pipe can supply. When an auditorium is empty, it's quick and easy to find a seat. As the bucket starts to fill up, the amount of water being poured in also has to slow down so as not to spill over. 
as an auditorium fills up, it takes more time to find an empty seat. That's why fast charging times are given as 10 to 80%, as it'll take just as long or even longer to charge from 80% to 100% as it does from 10% to 80%. For the temperature element, the optimal battery temperature is in the low 20s. If your EV has a battery preconditioning function, either automatic when navigating to a charger or manually activated, you should use this function so when you arrive at a charger, your vehicle will be able to charge at optimal speeds. Now that I've gone through these elements, let's apply them to EV chargers and see why a vehicle may not be receiving what's advertised at the station. Taking the VF8, it's capable of receiving a maximum of 150 kilowatts at 350 amps, while the VF9 is capable of 200 kilowatts at 500 amps. Pulling into a shell station, there's a sign that says that the station can provide up to 180 kilowatts, so why does a 400 volt vehicle only pull around 80 kilowatts when the vehicle's maximum may be higher at 100 or 200 kilowatts? Going to the charger itself, we can see its specification plate, which states that it supports voltages from 200 volts up to 920, but this is only half of the power equation. Moving to the right side of the plate, we see that the max current is limited to 200 amps. Therefore, on a 400 volt architecture vehicle, the maximum is 400 volts times 200 amps, which is 80 kilowatts. To actually pull 180 kilowatts from the station, a vehicle needs to be equipped with an 800 volt plus system like an Elucid. Comparing this with other stations, Here's what a chem power DC fast charging station shows, the power that a 400 volt versus 800 volt vehicle will receive. This is much more user friendly and helps drivers to understand what's actually available. 120 kilowatts for 400 volt systems and 240 kilowatts for 800 volt systems. Ivy is doing upgrades of many of their sites around Ontario to these much more reliable chem power units. Hopefully more stations upgrade their interfaces to show these details so drivers can better understand how charging works with their vehicle. Another location you can see the power rating is on the charging handle itself. Here are some examples, 300 amps and 500 amps. Here's a list of some of the amperage capacities of common DC fast chargers. The ChargePoint Express is 156 amps for a single unit or 200 amps if they're paired together. The Plus is up to 500 amps depending on how many power blocks are installed. Flow Smart DCs are 125 amps for the 50 kilowatt unit and 200 amps for the 100 kilowatt unit. The Ultra is up to 500 amps. The ABB Terra, used by Shell, Circuit Electric, BC Hydro, Circle K, and others, if it's got a Chatamo plug, it's 200 amps max for CCS, and if it's got two CCS plugs, it's 400 amps max. Jewel, which is another Canadian company, which makes battery back chargers, is up to 350 amps depending on the model. ChemPower can be up to 500 amps. Signet and BTC models, such as those used by Electrify Canada and Electrify America, are up to 500 amps. Blink and Alpatronic are up to 600 amps depending on the model. The reason DC fast chargers can charge your EV with that much power is because they use huge commercial power equipment to do the power conversion. These giant cabinets are doing all the conversion work of transforming AC power from the grid to DC power for the battery and sending that electricity directly into the vehicle's battery. As opposed to AC charging when the vehicle's shoebox size converter is taking power from the wall and converting it inside the vehicle for the battery. An AC charger is essentially just a giant safety switch and is simply passing through what's coming from the wall to the vehicle. All the power conversion is happening inside the vehicle and obviously there's limitations to the size, weight, cost, and amperage that the smaller power unit can convert. Not to mention that not many homes are supplied with enough power to have more than 60 amp breakers dedicated to an EV. To max out the AC J1772 or NAC specification with an 80 amp charger, you need a 100 amp breaker for instance. As the vehicle charges, the power it draws continues to decrease. Charging is fastest when the battery is emptier and within its optimal temperature. The colder a battery is, the less current it can accept. On that front, VinFast is working on battery preconditioning as well as over the air updates at home. Here are some charging curves showing the power levels at various states of charge. Vehicles are constantly benchmarked and tested with every software release on both the vehicle and charger side. Interoperability is a constant, ongoing part of EV development, and having participated in events such as Testival, the complexity and nuances of charger vehicle communications to facilitate the safe transfer of power are immense, and that's not even getting into the nice-to-haves like plug-in charge, the security around payments, or the interactions required to support demand response with utilities. Moving over to the much simpler AC side, as the label on the charging door says, VinFast vehicles support up to 48 amps of AC charging. Plugging into a higher power charger, such as an 80 amp charger, will not charge your vehicle any faster. In the settings tab, I've had the charging current limit fixed so it properly shows the vehicle's conversion capability of 48 amps. Need to know how long it'll take to charge your EV? Use one of the many calculators available. Here's an example using a 32 amp charger on a 40 amp breaker. 32 amps times 220 volts is 7 kilowatts. 
The VF8's battery capacity is 88 kilowatt hours. If you plug in at 10% and charge to the daily recommended 90% or 100% for road trips, it'll take a little over 11 hours. For those 11 and a quarter hours, if you were subscribed to Toronto Hydro's ultra low overnight rate and started charging at 9 p.m., you'd be charged $1.71 for two hours until 11 p.m., $1.57 from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., and then $1.07 from 7 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. for a total of $4.34 plus fees, delivery, and taxes. Some of the new charging features are that the vehicle automatically resume AC charging without having to unplug and replug if charging is interrupted, such as due to a power outage. Note, the charger must support the proper communications to enable this. The vehicle will also reduce its power draw in response to charger availability, such as if the charger is part of a smart or utility managed system. Lastly, the issues with the VinFast portable charger not completing its charge or getting interrupted have been fixed. When using public charging, one of the reasons why charging the VinFast vehicles I work on is so easy is because of the integration of over 85% of the charging networks in North America. No more having to deal with multiple apps, and the best part is no deposits. Instead of having to deposit $5 to $20 each in a dozen apps, the VinFast charging ecosystem bills only for the exact amount and there's no deposit required. Hopefully all of this helps you to better understand how to get the most out of charging your electric vehicle and reiterates the absolute necessity and convenience of having a home charger. Arriving home and taking 30 seconds to plug in your electric vehicle to charge overnight for less than the cost of a beaver tail is one reason why I'm never going back to an internal combustion vehicle for everyday driving. I've driven over 120,000 kilometers in my BMW i3 alone, and if it weren't for the work vehicles I have access to, I'd be doing even more mileage in this still futuristic little EV that can park anywhere. Lastly, here are some common questions I've seen about VinFast EVs. The owner's manual should be your go-to for answers to most of these, and it's always puzzling when people try to argue against the literal specifications of the vehicle, like saying it'll charge at 80 amps AC. On other topics, like Tesla supercharger access, I can assure you I know what I'm talking about. The charging manager for North America and I work together on an almost daily basis. We'll be at the EV and Charging Expo in Toronto this upcoming week. Do brake lights illuminate when using regenerative braking? Yes. Depending on deceleration, speed, and other factors, the brake lights will illuminate. This continues to be adjusted with software and does not depend on the model year. My sunshade keeps closing when it rains. The sunroof and sunshade automatic closing is independent of the automatic wipers and can be adjusted in settings vehicle. You can choose to keep the shade open and only close the sunroof. Note, this is only active when the vehicle is on and in ready. If you park your vehicle outside and it is completely off and it starts raining, it will not close the sunroof if set. My one-touch window controls don't work. Similar to other manufacturers, you can reset the one-touch up anti-pinch sensor by holding the up button until the window rolls all the way up and then continuing to hold the button for another five seconds. This should reset the anti-pinch sensor and can be done for any affected window. One of my tail lamps is on after the vehicle turns off. This is a function called parking or standing lights and is carried over from European vehicles. Once the vehicle is parked and off, if you hold the turn signal down on either side, it will activate the tail lights on that side. It's used for safety and visibility when parking on dark, unlit roads. To turn it off, press the turn signal down in the same direction. How large of a breaker do I need for a level 2 charger? Do I need to get a 30, 40, 50 or even 60 amp breaker? The electrician will review your home's electrical supply and total panel usage to determine how much capacity is available for the charger. Installs can be as small as a 20 amp 240 volt breaker allowing for a 16 amp level 2 charger, which is still 2.5 times faster than a regular 120 volt wall outlet. The VinFast home charger and many others, but not all, allow for setting the charger's current draw to the electrical code compliant maximum of 80% of the breaker's amperage. This is an area where I've seen non-EV electricians install the charger wrong by setting the max current incorrectly. This is very dangerous and could lead to damage and fires, or even worse. If your panel is nearing its max capacity, instead of a costly panel upgrade, there are now chargers and devices that can monitor in real time how much power your home is using and adjust the charger as necessary. Can I set the defaults for drive mode and regen braking? No, due to regulations. Like every other car, gasoline or otherwise, the vehicle resets after each driving cycle. When I get to my i3, it defaults to normal instead of eco. Tesla doesn't save chill mode for slower acceleration. Volkswagen and GM don't save B mode for more regenerative braking, and so on. Will the eco trim get sport mode back? Yes, sport mode is returning to the eco trim in a future update. Can I set the vehicle to start charging during off-peak times? Not yet. A future update will add scheduled charging. The VinFast home charger and many others will allow scheduled charging. Does Android Auto or Apple CarPlay use the car's data connection? No. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are mirroring what's on your phone. Any data being used is from the phone and not the vehicle. 
That's why the guest profile, which isn't allowed to use any vehicle data, can still use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Is regular speed only with no auto steer available for cruise control? Yes, the third button is speed and distance aware cruise control with no auto steer. Additionally, you can cancel or stop any adaptive cruise control by pressing the cancel button on the steering wheel, just like practically every other cruise control system. You don't have to use the brake like some reviews have erroneously claimed. How do I turn off the radio so it doesn't turn on when I unlock the car? Turn the volume knob counterclockwise until the volume is set to zero. This is different than using the mute button, which is only temporary and is unmuted the next time the car is unlocked. You can see this in the sound settings. When mute is pressed, the media volume is still at its original level and is restored when unmuted or the vehicle is unlocked. What temperature will the battery reach when charging? The battery's temperature is actively managed with a liquid cooling system. I've seen the temperature reach as high as 42 degrees Celsius or 170 degrees Fahrenheit when fast charging and parked out in the sun on a hot day. You'll hear the cooling system activate around 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the fastest you've charged these vehicles? As part of routine testing, I consistently max out both the VF8 and the VF9 as I arrive with less than 20% and a warm battery at 20 degrees Celsius or above or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Some chargers are able to max out the VF8's 350 amp capacity, but in the greater Toronto area, there is currently only one location located north of the city in Vaughan that is capable of maxing out the VF9's 500 amp capacity. What do the various states and colors of the charging indicator mean and when can I unplug? Whenever a charger is plugged in, the charging handle is locked and the light will turn solid yellow as the vehicle waits for up to two minutes for the charger to begin the session. If there is a fault, the light will turn solid red and unlock. If the session times out without any communication, the light will turn off and unlock. When charging is active, the light will blink green and the handle will be locked. When charging is stopped or completed, the light will be solid green and the handle will be unlocked once the vehicle is unlocked. Future software will further tweak this behavior to make it more convenient, such as automatically unlocking when charging is complete. What are some other things that can impact DC fast charging? The other factors are those typically out of the driver's control. Some examples, the charger's cooling system is faulty. One of the power blocks needs servicing or replacement. The site itself isn't supplied with enough power. The utility or site operator is limiting the max power due to demand charges such as those during peak hours. Here's a quick tip if you're using a BTC charger with a white handle. If it's only providing 30 to 40 kilowatts and your vehicle's battery is warm and at an optimally low state of charge, that means the charger's cooling system is faulty. Try switching to another charger. Also, and I wish this didn't need to be said, but apparently it does, do not plug your vehicle into a visibly faulty or damaged charger. When will the VF8 get the updated user interface? It has started rolling out for the VF9 and will be available for the VF8 this summer. Any other questions or comments, ask them below. And as always, thanks for watching.